And hello, everyone. Thanks for showing up. My name is uh, Feng Wei Zhang. I'm from George Mason University. Today, I'm going to talk about um, using hardware features for increased uh, debugging transparency. This is the overview of the talk. First, I will start with the motivation of this paper, and then I'll talk about background, like a system management mode. Then I will talk about the system architecture followed by the evaluation results. Lastly, I will conclude my talk with the future directions. Motivation. So the number of malware attacks against the computer systems has been increased dramatically. These are some malware attack statistics. Semantic blocked an average of 247 attacks per day. McAfee reported 8 million new malware samples in the first quarter in 2014. In last year alone, Malware threats has grown 34% with over 200,000 new threats per day. This is reported by the Kaspersky Lab. Nowadays, computer systems rely on a larger amount of application to operate, and these applications inevitably create vulnerabilities that could be easily exploited by attackers. Thus, there is a need for us to analyze the behavior of the malware and defend against them. So traditionally, we use uh, virtualization or emulation technologies for malware analysis. And uh, basically, we use virtualization technology to create an isolated execution environment and run the malware inside of the virtual machine and then run the analysis tool outside of the virtual machine. In this case, analysis tool will be isolated from the malware and then we can study the behavior of the malware. However, there are some limitations for these uh, traditional approaches. First. Virtualization-based approach determined on hypervisor that has a large trusted computing base. For example, Zen hypervisor has about 500,000 lines of source code. And uh, National Vulnerability Database shows that there are about 245 vulnerabilities for Zen hypervisor. Second, traditional approach is incapable of analyzing rootkits with the same or higher level privilege. For example, this approach cannot analyze hypervisor layer or firmware level rootkits. Most importantly, virtualization-based approach cannot analyze ARM the malware with anti-virtualization or anti-emulation techniques. So nowadays, uh, malware become more and more sophisticated. So basically, if they can use anti-VM and anti-emulation techniques. For example, if a malware finds itself running inside of the virtual machine, it will quit or suspend its own malicious behavior. In this case, uh, the virtualization-based approach will not be analyzed. Last but not least, this approach sometimes, sometimes suffers from high performance overhead. So in light of this problem, we present a bare metal debugging system called MOT that leverages system management mode for malware analysis. It basically uses system management mode as a hardware isolated execution environment to run the analysis tool. And it is capable of detecting hypervisor level rootkits. Basically, our approach moves the analysis tool from the hypervisor layer to the hardware, which can achieve a higher level of transparency. Before I'm going to introduce the detail of the system, I would like to give you guys some background knowledge, like system management mode. So what is system management mode? SMN is a special CPU mode existing in the x86 architecture, and it can be used as a hardware isolated execution environment. Originally, SMA is designed for implementing system functions like a power management. So for example, if we fold the laptop, the laptop goes to sleep, and the laptop may invoke some power saving functions, and these power saving functions could be inside of the system management mode. Also, system management mode has an isolated system management RAM that is inaccessible from the normal operating system. When the normal operating system wants to access this memory region, the hardware will automatically redirect the access to the VGA memory. This is due to the VGA memory has the same mapping with the system management RAM. The only way to enter system management mode is to enter system manager interrupt. The next slides, I'm going to talk about the approaches, how to trigger system manager interrupt. To exit SMA, we run a special instruction, RSM, to resume the long operating system back to the protect mode. And note that uh, this RSM instruction can only be executed in the system management mode. So in general, there are two approaches to trigger system management interrupt, software-based and hardware-based. 
For software-based approach, we can write to a special I.O. port specified the source bridge. For example, Intel chipsets, they use OX2B as a port number. For AMD, they have different port number. For hardware-based approach, we can use I.O. devices to trigger system manager interrupt. For example, we can use network card, keyboard, mouse, or hardware timers. And uh, the figure below shows you the steps how to trigger system manager interrupt. The box on your left represents the normal operating system, which is in protective mode. The box on your right represents the isolated execution environment, which is in the system management mode. When the software or hardware triggers a system management interrupt, the CPU will automatically switches from the protective mode to system management mode. Then the CPU will start to execute a special handler called a SMI handler. And this SMI handler is reside in the isolated system management, system management RAM. And this system management RAM is inaccessible from the normal operating system. And at the end of the SMI, SMI handler, it will execute the special instruction ISM to resume the normal operating system back to the protect mode. This figure basically just shows you your typical software layers. And uh, from the figure, we can see that the uh, system management mode is part of the BIOS, and uh, it belongs to the firmware layer. I talk about the motivation and the background. So next, I'm going to introduce you the system architecture. As I mentioned, traditional malware debugging, they use virtualization or immunization technologies. So basically, if um, now this malware become more and more sophisticated, uh, if it finds itself running inside of the virtual machine, it will quit or suspend its own malicious behavior. So in this case, traditional approaches will not be able to analyze it. Malt debugs the malware on a bare metal machine, and it can remain transparent in the presence of existing anti-debugging, anti-VM, and anti-immunization techniques. The figure below shows you the architecture of the Malt system. The box on your left represents the debugging client, and the box on your right represents the debugging server. And we run the debugger application on the debugging server and use the SMI handler to introspect it. And also we run a GDB like the debugger on the client side. And when the client wants to start a debugging session, it will send a message to the debugging server and trigger system manager interrupt. Then the client will send the debugging commands. And when the SMI handler receives the debugging commands, it will execute the commands and send the response message back to the client. We have, we have implemented a few debugging functions in multiple systems. One of the functions we implement is the step-by-step -step execution. And uh, the figure shows you how we achieve step-by-step -step execution in multiple systems. And basically, we use the performance counter for this purpose. Performance counter is a hardware feature that can count the hardware events. And uh, for example, if we want to implement instruction by instruction execution, we first, we set the performance counter to its uh, maximum value. Then we set the performance counter to count the number of retired instructions. So basically, when the next instruction retires, the counter will overflows. And this overflow action will generate an exception. Then we reroute this exception to become a system manager interrupt. And in this case, we can trigger, each in, uh, trigger a system manager interrupt for each instructions. And note that we also can use other hardware events and, uh, to, uh, to implement the different stepping modes. So I talked about motivation, background, system architecture. Now I'm going to talk about the evaluation results. For the evaluation result, we evaluate our system in two aspects transparency and performance. For transparency analysis, we focus on two subjects. One is the running environment of the debugger. The other is the debugger itself. For the running environment of a debugger, we compare the system management mode with the virtualization and immunization technologies. So in model system, we use system management mode, and it is hard of a future existing in all x86 architecture. Well, for most traditional approach, they use virtualization and emulation technologies. 
and uh, they introduce a large trust contributing base. Also, they introduce a large, large attacking surface. So we believe that using system management mode is more transparent. In terms of side effects introduced by the debugger itself, we, in mode system, we em em emulate all of the side effects introduced by mode in CPU, cache, memory, I.O., BIOS, even timing. And uh, also we show that we can mitigate most of the uh, side effects introduced by, mouse, by our systems. Towards true transparency, MOT is not fully transparent. And uh, for example, it cannot defend against the external timing attacks. And uh, we believe that it increases the state of the art debugging transparency. And also, we would like to draw attention to this hardware-based approach for addressing the debugging transparency problem. To measure the performance overhead, we implement a prototype of our systems. The test bed specification shows on the slides. The table shows you the SMN switching and the resume time. So basically from the table, we can see that SMN switching takes about three microseconds, and SMN resume only takes about five microseconds. So in total, these two operations only take about eight microseconds. So it's pretty, slow, uh, pretty low overhead. Also, we measure the stepping overhead in our system. Since the SMA is a hardware feature, we measure the overhead on both Windows and Linux platforms. And uh, we use a different benchmarks to measure this. And this table shows you the benchmark of Pi operation. So also, we can see that we include uh, four different stepping modes. They are file control transfer, near return, taking branch, and instructions. From the table, we can see that if we increase the granularity of these stepping modes, the overhead increases. In conclusion, we developed a system called MOT. It is a biometric debugging system that implements system management mode to analyze malware. And it is a hardware assistance system that, that does not use any virtualization or emulation technologies. And it provides a more transparent execution environment and also by testing existing anti-debugging, anti-VM, and anti-emulation techniques, MOT remains transparent. So in terms of future work, we would like to combine MOT with other popular debuggers, for example, IDEA Pro or GDB Client. And in this case, uh, basically, we can build a generic interface between MOT and other popular debuggers. And the figure below basically shows you the design of using MOT with multiple other debugging clients. This is a reference. Thank you very much for your attention. I will be happy to take any questions. Uh, thanks, Fang Wei, for an interesting talk. Uh, questions? Uh, uh, my question is simple. So what's the difference uh, between your work and uh, bare box? Uh, I'm sorry, could you? Repeat your question. Okay. Uh, what's the difference uh, between over you? Uh, sorry. Uh, what's the difference uh, between your work and uh, bare box? I see. So uh, the question is, what's the difference between my work and bare box? So as far as I know, for bare box, it's uh, also a bare metal uh, malware analysis system. So basically, the bare box they are trying to focus on the fast restoring. So basically, if you want to debug a malware, you want to start from the clean session, right? And in that case, they try to use the faster way to restart the system. And uh, uh, in our work, we use system management mode. And uh, so basically, it's, in our work, we focus on the transparency part. And in their work, I think it's, we have different focus. Thank you very much. Next question. Matthias Peil, Purdue University. Um, I wonder about timing issues, if malware reads out timing counters or cycle counters and stuff like that, can it observe that you are trapping and resuming all the time? I'm sorry, so your question is about the timing issue of the system? Yes, assume the malware executes RTDSC all the time to count cycles that it spent executing, and uh, you're switching back and forth all the time, and if you're single stepping, this will have huge issues regarding timing of the malware itself, and if the malware itself self-checks itself, it could detect it. 
So basically the question is, um, a malware can use the timing information to detect our system, since uh, ma the major contribution of the work is trying to achieve the transparency, right? So uh, for timing attacks, I believe there are two kinds of timing attacks. One is the internal timing attacks, like you mentioned, we can use the RTT, R RTC, try to check the current time, and uh, to see if there is overhead means that debugger exists, right? And also another timing attack actually is the external timing attack. So basically, you can send a request to the external server to ask for timing information. So for the internal timing attack, basically in our work, we did like uh, modify those kind of uh, uh, internal timers and uh, to see, to basically mitigate those kind of internal timing attacks. But for example, if you execute uh, some time in the SMI handler, we are just subst we are going to minus that uh, timing information for the, for the internal timer. But unfortunately for our work, we still cannot defend against external timing attacks because external timing attacks is very hard to defend and also the timing, inf timing information could be encrypted even. So in that case, it's, uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are still cannot defend against that uh, uh, attack. Thank you. Sure, thanks. Hi, so uh, on, on that note, um, you said the overhead was like seven microseconds, which you said was very low, but that's like three or f almost four orders of magnitude larger than the time it takes to execute one instruction. So if you're doing that single stepping, you're, you're slowing down execution by a factor of well over a thousand, right? So that doesn't sound like low overhead. Yes, you are right. So <laughs> basically, <laughs> yeah, as I showed in the slides, so there are two performance evaluation. One is the estimate switching time, and as I showed in the slides, let me go back for the slides. So in the performance, estimate switching time is pretty low. There's, for each switching, it's only take about uh, eight microseconds. Like you mentioned, if you do the single stepping, means that every instruction needs this time. And uh, from this, basically, this table shows you the stepping overhead. And uh, we can see that for instruction level overhead, actually, it's about uh, 970 slow down, time slow down. So the system it's, 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 it's has a very high performance overhead. But the purpose of this work is we are trying to achieve the high transparency. And we do believe there is some kind of malware. They can maybe sacrifice this performance overhead, but the focus of that malware debugging is trying to achieve the high transparency. But I do agree with you, this system still have a very high performance uh, uh, impact. Uh, Trent Jager from Penn State. So I've seen um, malware that takes advantage of, um, if you're trying to analyze it, say, using GDB, the malware will actually look for the effects that GDB causes to your address space in order to detect that the malware is being debugged and take countermeasures against that. So did you look at your GDB-like debugger and the side effects that it has and whether those are detectable? by the malware? Uh, I'm sorry, so I hope I understand your question. So your question is, uh, there are some bugs in the GDB, maybe? No, not bugs. The GDB, the malware will look for whether you've instrumented, you're using GDB to debug the malware. I see, I see. So uh, for our GDB-like debugger, actually, we put most of our code in this kind of uh, isolated execution environment called a system management mode. And this code is inaccessible from the normal operating system. So the malware basically cannot look at the system management on the memory to identify what code is over there. So in this case, we are but, transparent. But don't you instrument the malware in order to cause the traps to the system management mode? And those, that instrumentation could be detected potentially by the malware, and thus the malware would stop. Yeah, right, running. right. So in this case, uh, we, in our paper, we emulate all of those, those kind of side effects, including you mentioned, for example, we basically introspect, uh, uh, introspect the malware. We have to have a mechanism way to like, uh, set the interrupts frequently, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, also in our paper, we showed how we mitigated those kind of side effects and also the, those kind of artifacts. And uh, I will be happy to talk about, uh, about okay. those kind of with you after the talk and uh, regarding to the paper. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So, uh, so how do you compare uh, the use of um, SM, um, um, SMI with the single step uh, debugging f uh, feature of the Intel processor? 
the question is how can I compile my system with the Intel feature stepping system? Because uh, uh, the processor itself has its own si uh, single step debugging um, function, right? So uh, actually, I'm not familiar with the processor single stepping mode, but uh, I believe if you are talking about the debug register by the Intel chipset, for example, for that debugging register, so basically, if you have ring zero privilege, the malware can read what's in there, right? And uh, for that purpose, I think the purpose of Intel is trying to, for the debugging function, they are not trying to do the high transparency. But for our system, the focus is to try to achieve the high transparency. And uh, although the debugging function is not as powerful as the Intel uh, debugging function, but uh, I think the two systems have very different focus. I hope I answered the question. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you.